I was watching a commercial this week and a little jingle came on. And it, I don't usually pay attention to commercials like that. And it just caught me when this jingle started playing. And the, the jingle said this, nothing is everything. Nothing is everything. Can you say that with me? Nothing is everything. And I want to preach for the next few moments about when nothing is everything. This has been a philosophy um, that has been talked about for years now. And the philosophy, for those of you that have been through philosophy, know about philosophy, you probably heard the phrase, nothing is everything and everything is nothing. But what I'm going to preach to you about today is more than a philosophy. If you're a believer, it's a lifestyle. As a Christian, we understand from the moment of salvation that nothing is everything. You were saved by nothing that you did. You were saved by nothing that you earned. You were saved by nothing. What could you have brought to Christ to earn your salvation? The Bible says that your best gift was filthy rags. And I could go into the meaning of filthy rags there. I won't do it today. But these are filthy, disgusting rags. And the Apostle Paul tells us that the best that you had to offer Jesus was filthiness. You know what that means? You had nothing. But when you brought your nothing to Jesus Christ, he gave you everything. That's the God that we serve. And there is somebody in this room today who is facing nothing. You are facing a nothing situation. You don't have what you need to turn it around. You don't have what you need to solve it. You don't have, you are out of hope. You are out of options. You are out of places to turn. But I know a God who if you'll bring him your nothing, he'll give you back everything. Do you remember when Jesus told them, he said, with God, nothing is impossible. Can you say that with me? Nothing is impossible. I love that verse. Nothing is impossible, but I think we misread that verse. What we believe is that nothing is impossible for God to do. I do believe that wholeheartedly. There is nothing that is impossible for God. But I believe that verse has a deeper meaning, and here's what it means. Nothing, well, that's impossible for God. You can't bring God something and him do nothing. If you bring anything to God, he's going to do something with it. Even if it feels like it's a nothing, bring your nothing to Jesus and watch him turn it around and do everything you needed him to do and so much more. There was a woman in the Bible, a widow, and she was facing a great heart, a very difficult time. They were coming to take her son's prisoners because of the debt that she owed. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2, so she, she runs to the prophet, and Elisha said to her, what do you want me to do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, I have nothing but a jar of oil. Oh, beware of those conjunction junctions. What's your function? Watch that but, that conjunction. I have nothing but a jar. That's all I need. That's what God's saying to somebody today. You don't have the money for your debt. You don't have the solution for your problem. You don't have the cure to your illness. But there is something that you have that you can bring to God and he'll do everything you need him to do. So Elisha said, go borrow vessels from everywhere. All your neighbors, empty vessels. Don't gather just a few. And when you have come in, shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels. Set aside the full ones. So she went from him, shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. And now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. If you want to understand why City Gate Church is not in the business of eliminating services, if you want to understand why we're in the business of adding services, it's because we believe that the day the church gets full, the miracle stops. So we're always going to have an empty seat in the house because that empty seat is a candidate for a miracle. 
God's, and, and, and he said, Elisha said, go, sell the oil, pay your debt. You and your sons will live on the rest. Here's what I love about this woman. When she was facing a difficult time, she knew where to go. She knew where to turn. It's important to know where to go when you don't know what to do. All of us are going to face problems in our life, and we don't know what to do. But it's in those moments you need to know where to go. Don't ever allow a problem to chase you from the house of God. Don't ever allow a problem to isolate you and cause you to draw back from the people who can agree with you in prayer. That's the plan of the enemy. You need to know where to go when you don't know what to do. She's a widow, a single parent, an impossible situation, no food, no means to support. She is being threatened. If she doesn't pay, she's going to lose her children. It seems like nothing is going for her, for, for her. But there was one thing that was going for her. She knew where to turn. Everybody say turn. I looked up the word turn. It means to move something so that it's in a different position in relation to its surroundings or its previous position. I know where you are today, you're in a problem, but you have the opportunity to turn and put yourself in a miracle. You don't have to live another day in the problem. You don't have to live another day in the fear. You don't have to live another day in the impossible. You can turn today by faith and step foot into a God who is everything and has everything you need. You can turn from fear to faith. You can turn from worry to worship. You can turn from complaining to confessing. You can turn from pitying to praising. What you do today will either put you closer to a miracle or further away from a miracle. And this woman turned and got herself a miracle. Remember Simon Peter when Jesus said, let's go out and let's cast down the nets. And he said, he said, master, we've toiled all night and we've caught nothing. Watch this next word, nevertheless, at your word. That is going to be the difference between you leaving the way you came or you leaving with the miracle you came to get. Does anybody have a nevertheless in the house? I know what the doctor said, but nevertheless, at his word. I know what the lawyer said, but nevertheless, at his your word. I know what fear has said, but nevertheless, God, at your word, I will be strong and of good courage. I will not fear. God, I thank you that you satisfy me. Great is my peace. I'm thankful, God, that you are causing all things to work for my good. That's the God that I serve. And I need somebody to grab a hold of a nevertheless today. I know what the doctor said, but nevertheless, by his stripes, I'm you're healed. And by your word, God, I'm going to do what you've called me to do, and I'm going to step into an unusual miracle today. Somebody give Jesus a big praise. <laughs> Second Kings chapter 6, same prophet Elisha. They go into this city. He has a servant that is with him. Well, the army finds out Elisha's in this city. So they go and they surround, they lay siege on this city. Thousands of soldiers uh, go around the border of this city. There was no way of escape. The servant walks out in the morning and he looks and he sees all the armies that are arranged against him. And he goes into the prophet and he said, what are we going to do? There is no way out of this. There is no escape route. We're, we're in trouble big time. We have no hope. We are out of options. Elisha, what are we going to do? And that prophet, that man of God with faith steps out on the balcony and he said, no, nope, we're going to be all right. And the, and, the, and the servant said, what do you mean? What you? No, no, there's nobody that's for us. They're all against us. And Elisha looks at him and said, those that are with us are more than those that are against us. 
You see nothing, I see everything. I don't know what your vision is today. Maybe all you see is surrounded, surrounded by trouble, surrounded by pain, surrounded by brokenness, and you see nothing, 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 nothing. But by faith, the prophet is standing up here today saying to you, those that are with you are more than those that are against you. And he said, what are we going to do? We have no hope. We have no solutions. We have no way out. And Elisha laid his hands on him and said, God open his eyes that he may see what I see. You want to know why I'm preaching today? I want you to see what I see. I know you don't see a way out, but I see a way out. I know you don't see any hope, but I see hope. And I'm going to preach till God anoints your eyes to see what that man saw. And when he anointed his eyes, he saw chariots of fire surrounding the army that had them surrounded. I got to preach to somebody today. Whatever's been surrounding you, God has sent an angelic host to surround them. Oh, you can't lose because God has already promised you the victory. Somebody give Jesus a big praise in this room. Tell somebody nothing is everything. Nothing is everything. There was a woman. 12 years struggled with an issue of blood, could not stop it. And here's what your Bible says. She dis just discharged of blood for 12 years. She had spent all her living on physicians. She could not be healed by any one. So you know what she's left with after all her remedies? Nothing. She's left with nothing. She's left with no money. She's left with no hope. And she is left with no options. I'm preaching to somebody today in this room who feels like you've got no hope, you've got no options, you're out of money, you're out of opportunities, you're out of chances. But then something started stirring on the inside of her. And here is the problem with this woman. She is out of her time. And that's how some of you feel. I, I'm, I, I'm out of time. I, I don't have time. I don't have time to deal with this. I don't have time. I need something right now. Now, up until this time, the only people that were ever healed by Jesus were people that Jesus initiated the healing. Never before had anyone ever initiated a healing by faith. Why? Because the scripture had not yet been fulfilled. By his stripes, we are healed. So you did not have a right to lay hold of the stripes on Jesus' back until he had been through the, the punishment of crucifixion and received that, that torture of the stripes on his back. Only then were you by faith allowed to receive a healing by reaching out. She is in the wrong time but needs a miracle right now. Now, there are some people in this room, you don't have another week to wait. You don't have another month to wait. You need a miracle right now, but you've got nothing. But something started stirring on this lady, and she said, but if I can but touch the hem of his garment. I got nothing, but I got one chance left. I've tried doctors, but I got one chance left. I've tried this, but I got one chance left. And I might as well give Jesus a try. And she reached out, and the Bible says when she grabbed hold of the hem of his garment, Jesus said, virtue has gone out of me. And in the moment, she was healed. In a moment. And do you know what the next scripture says, the next chapter? Because that woman stepped out of her time and got a miracle, they started laying people in the streets and as Jesus would walk by they would start touching the hem of his garment and they were made whole somebody's about to get a miracle today that other people are going to start doing what you did and they're going to get a miracle too I need somebody to give God a praise if you got nothing but you know he's about to do everything Let me prophesy over you just for a moment. Just like Job, chapter 8, verse 7. And though your beginning was small, your latter days will be very great. <laughs> Somebody give God a praise right there. Here's how the message reads it. Even though you're not much right now, you'll end up better than ever. 
it doesn't look like much right now, but better than ever is on the way. I speak it and I believe it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a living, breathing miracle of better is on the way. Isaiah 61. What do you do with ashes? Nothing. What are ashes worth? Nothing. But Isaiah 61 verse 3. God said, I'll give them beauty for their ashes. Ashes is nothing, but if you bring them to God, he's going to do everything. He's going to, I don't know what your ashes are. Your ashes may be a broken marriage. Your ashes may be kids that are addicted. Your ashes may be health problems. Your ashes may be financial problems. Your ashes may be mental strongholds, fear, anxiety, depression. But God said today, if you'll bring me your ashes, I'm going to give you beauty in exchange. Now I'm about to preach. That was the introduction to the message. Let's preach. Say this with me, God is, God can, and God will. I want you to say it until it gets in your spirit. God is, God can, and God will. Say it again, God is, God can, and God will. God is, God can, and God will. God is, God can, and God will. God is, God can, and God will, I'm, I'm going to keep saying it till it gets down in your spirit. God is, God can, and God will. God is, God is, God is, God is a rewarder of those who come to him by faith. God is seated on his throne. God is in control of whatever it is you're going through. God is, God is, God is the great I am. God is the great healer. God is the great deliverer. God is the great I am. I am. I am. God is. God can. And God will. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now. Somebody shout now. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that which I could ever ask or even think according to the power that's at work on the inside of me. Shout now, now, God is now. He is not just the God of yesterday. He is not just the God of tomorrow. He is the God of right now. He is healing now. He is delivering now. He is blessing now. He is lifting up heads now. He has given you joy now. He has given you peace now. I'm going to preach till somebody shouts in this place, God is now. to him who is able. Well, if you don't shout on anything else, you might as well shout on able. Able. Because not only is God is, God can. Because he's able. God's able. God's able. God's able to erase years of hurt. God's able to undo what parents did to you. God's able to undo the brokenness. God's able to undo the bitterness. God's able to undo what they, when they lied on you, when they talked about you. God's able to rewrite doctor's reports. God's able to rewrite financial statements. God is able. I don't know what you need today, but I need somebody to shout and believe God that he's able right now, what do you need from God? Start declaring it. He is and he's able. He is and he's able. He is and he's able. Shout, God is. God can. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly 
above all that which you could ever ask or even think. Here's my favorite part about this. He is not just a God who is. He's not just a God who can. He's a God who will. He's a God who will do for you what he did for the widow woman. He's a God who will do for you what he did for Simon Peter. He's a God who will do for you what he did for Job. He's a God who will do for you what he did for Elisha's servants. He's a God who will do for you what he did for the woman with the issue of blood. He's a God that if it's in the Bible, you can lay hold of it today and say, I believe God, you're able and you will do it today. Give him a praise if you know it, he's gonna do it today. Let's shout it, God is, God can, and God will. God is, God can, God will. Here's my last challenge for you. Then we're gonna move on. I want you right now in your mind to think about the greatest miracle God could perform for you. Get it, I want you to think about it. I want you to think about it. What is the greatest thing that God could do for you right now? What is the greatest? What is the greatest, the greatest miracle? I'm talking, just go crazy with this one, church. What is the greatest? Think about it. You got it in your mind? Here's what I say to you. God is. God can. God will. Do exceedingly, abundantly, more than anything you can ask or even think. If that don't make you shout, nothing will. Because not, not only is he going to do what you're thinking about, not only is he going to do what you're asking about, but he's saying, I'm going to do so much more because that's the kind of God I am. I'm a God of the unusual. And if you'll bring me your nothing, I'll do everything in return. Give Jesus a big praise. You can be seated for a moment. Think about how he uses small things. He uses the tear of a baby to move the heart of Pharaoh's daughter. He uses a shepherd's stick to work mighty miracles in Egypt. He uses a sling and a stone to conquer a nation. He uses a widow with a little meal to sustain a prophet. He uses a donkey to preach his truth and the jawbone of another donkey to slay a thousand men. He can use a small thing and bring everything out of it. What I want to tell somebody today is Jesus likes to have the weak, the broken, the failures. That way when something happens, you don't get the credit. He gets all the glory. God do miracles so big that men can't explain what just happened. They'll have to turn around and give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. You receive that? Today's a day of the unusual. For 12, 13 years now, I've preached this series on the unusual, challenging people to take a step of faith, sow a seed. It's never been about an amount, it's always been about the heart. And sow something from your heart, believing for a miracle. And for those years, I've always preached with this envelope in my pocket. You say, Pastor, why do you do that? I want it to be saturated by faith. Before I put this seed in the ground, it's going to be saturated by faith that today, God's going to give me an unusual miracle. Do you believe that? But this year, we're going to do it a little different. We're going to do it a little different. We, don't, we didn't do the big promotion that we normally do around this. I told you about one, two weeks before. 
that we were going to do this. But today, I just felt, and I told, I told the team, I said, every year, we challenge people to bring something, to give for a miracle. But how many years have we as a church stepped forward and gave first? Gave as a church to show that it's not about the money. It's about sowing a seed by faith and believing God for a miracle. So I said, you know what we're going to do at CityGate? We're going to go first this year. Before we ask anyone to give anything, we're going to give first. And here's what God laid on our heart. Right now, the Los Angeles Dream Center, who many of you know we support all the way out in Los Angeles. Work they're doing is absolutely incredible. And they're building 40 brand new rooms for homeless families. And I said, you know what? Let's get involved with this. And you can remodel one of these rooms or you can provide one of these rooms for $4,000. And I said, you know what we're going to do as a church? We're going to go first. And we're going we're gonna to buy 10 of those rooms. So Los Angeles Dream Center, City Gate Church this morning is sending $40,000 to the Dream Center to build those homes for the homeless. There's another wonderful mission we support. It's called Healing Rain Ministries. It's in Nicaragua. They are discipling, they're ministering to families. 11 schools ministering to over 2,500 children. They've added, or they're adding, they're in the process of adding four more schools and one high school this February. They minister to the nursing homes and 2020 had their first church plant with over 200 people attending that church in Nicaragua. We helped by purchasing all the doors and all the windows for that church where people are now receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ. We did that last year. We also recently fed 350 families with food for two weeks. That's what you did, City Gate Church. We've already done that. But right now, they have a need. And their need is they need a van in Nicaragua to help with the transportation of bringing these kids to school and bringing these families to church. Well, when I heard about it, I said, you know what? We're going to step up and we're going to be a part of this miracle. They needed 32000 for the van. So Healing Rain Ministries in Nicaragua, City Gate Church is sending you that van. We're purchasing the whole thing, $32,000. That's what we're sending your way. Somebody give Jesus a big praise. One group that has always touched my heart is that of single moms, especially this time of year. I know how much work one three-year-old is for me and Kim. I can't imagine raising kids on your own and being a single mom and having to do that on your own. So I'm going to ask, and I know this is going to be a big step of faith, but if you are a single mother in this room, would you step out in an aisle and come down here and meet me at this altar? Because God told me to pray a prayer of blessing over every single mother in this room on unusual Sunday. So if you're a single mother, I want you to come down here to the altar. Same thing at Lebanon. If you're watching at Lebanon, come down right now if you're a single mother. Come on. Let's hear it for the single moms in the room, can we? This is what real superheroes look like. Come on. Come on. Woo. Come on. With every circumstance. Come on, every single mother. Give God a big praise one more time. So single moms, it's an incredible group of people right here. And God instructed us to pray a blessing over you. But not just pray a blessing, to be a blessing. And we had prepared to give every single mother here a $50 Target gift card for Christmas. But instead, we doubled it because we serve a God of more than enough. 
and every single mom's gonna get a hundred dollar gift card to Target. So I want you, let's go ahead, let's start handing them out right now. this way. Stretch your hands this way. Let's bless these single moms. Oh, we speak abundance. We speak miracles. You came to God today with nothing, but I'm believing you're going to leave with everything. I bless every mother. I bless every single mother represented here today. Every single mother represented here today. We speak the blessing of God over your life. I come against feelings of not enough. I feel, I come against feelings of oppression, depression, and I speak the blessing of God over your life right now in Jesus' name. Moms, when you receive that, you can head back to your seats. Somebody give Jesus a big praise. He's a God of more than enough. you to get the seed ready get the seed ready in this if in this atmosphere in this atmosphere watch what God can do with nothing watch what God let me ask you your seed what is it in comparison to the miracle you're believing God for today is it not nothing when I think of the miracles I'm believing God for right now I couldn't sow a seed big enough to buy that miracle. My seed at best is nothing except an act of faith saying, God, I'm surrounded by ashes, but I'm going to give this to you and I'm going to watch you bring beauty out of it. God, I feel like I'm surrounded by the enemy, but I'm going to give this to you and I'm going to watch you bring a victory out of it. God, we've caught nothing all night, all year. I feel like I've come up empty-handed with nothing. But at your word, nevertheless, I'm going to try again. I'm going to take a step of faith, and I'm going to watch you bring everything out of this. One step of faith. Let me ask you again. What do you have in your house? Nothing. But I got a seed. I got a seed. And it might be this seed that results in everything. So I'm going to ask the ushers to help me if, we, if you will. We're just going to bring you down a section at a time. And I want you, if you're given by an envelope, then just bring that envelope up here. Lay it on the altar. If you're given by push pay or digital, however you give right now, can get that information on the screen so they have it. Get that on the screen so they have it. There we go. That's how you give digital. You can text to give and be a part of this unusual offering. But you say, well, pastor, I I'm not giving by envelope. I'm going to do digital giving. Take the walk anyways as a step of faith. 
believing that you're bringing God nothing and watch God do everything in your life. Are you ready? Come on right now. Bring it. I want you to bring it at Lebanon right now. Come down that aisle. Lay it at the altar. Lay it at the altar. Come on. We're believing you for miracles, God. We're believing you for miracles, God. God, do it for marriages today. Bring something out of nothing. God, marriages that are facing trouble right now. I'm speaking a blessing over them right now. I come against every attack of the enemy. I come against every lie of the enemy. I come against every plan of the enemy. Devil, you have been found, and you must return seven times anything that you put your hand on. We're believing you, God, for the unusual. We're believing you for the supernatural. We're believing you for more than enough. God, I'm speaking blessing over business owners today. I thank you, Father, for multiplication in businesses. I thank you for entrepreneurs, creative ideas that nobody else has thought of. Today, God, we're sowing and we're believing you for a miracle, for a miracle. Nothing is too small for you to do something great with it. You've done it before. You will do it again. We speak blessings. Supernatural, doctor defying kill. Household revival. We speak it and we believe it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. And I will be content. If you're watching online. Don't miss this moment. I don't care where in the world you are. Don't miss this moment to be a part of a miracle. Follow those instructions on your screen and sow and believe God's going to do something significant in your life today. I got to remind you, God is, God can, and God will. God is. Somebody's going to wake up tomorrow morning shouting, God is, God can, and God will. God is. God can and God will. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that which you could ever ask or think because the power of the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you. We give you praise, oh God. We give you praise, oh God. If you believe God's already orchestrating miracles right now, I want you to give him a praise. If you're not waiting till tomorrow for a miracle, if you're believing it's a now miracle, it's a today miracle, I'm bringing God nothing. He's about to do everything and so much more. Take about 10 seconds and just give him the biggest praise you've given him all morning long.
somebody needs to start shouting, yeah. God is. God can. God, can. God will. God will. God is. Be it unto her according to her faith, I pray today. Be it unto her according to her faith, I pray today. God is. God is. God can. God will. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Are you glad you came today? Lebanon, I'm so encouraged by you. That crowd just seems to grow every single week at Lebanon. It's absolutely amazing. Let's let Lebanon know how much you love them today. Lebanon, we want to hear you. Tell us how much you love Forest Park. Right now at Lebanon, our care pastors are coming forward. Same here at Forest Park. Our care pastors are coming forward. If you need specific prayer in any area of your life, Let's do what the Bible says. Come down. Let someone agree with you. I believe God can perform a miracle in your life. Let me bless you today. Lord, I bless your people. Thank you. We have been in the presence of a miracle working God. And God, we're leaving here today with the confidence you can, you're able, and you will do it because of who you are. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Let's say it one more time. God is, God, is. God, can, God can, and God is able. God, is able. God bless you.